For any type of content management system, the admin module is the heart of the application. This is where content is created and user systems are maintained. With this video, I will show you how to create a single page app for the admin module. Hi, I'm Ben Plesier and, like you, a fervent user of Wabbler. I start this video where I have created the index and layout pages for the public module. This was shown in the third video of this playlist. I also have the database and database tables as shown in the fifth video. The task at hand for this video is to create the layout and index pages for the admin module. I start with the layout page. With the layouts folder selected, I click on the plus button. This opens the page properties dialog where I enter the name of the page. I call it admin. I leave the type as layout page and save the page. After a bit of rumbling in the background, I am presented with a layout page, complete with the frameworks and content section. I will now add a header to the page. I do this by clicking on content page and selecting the before arrow. In the pop-up dialog, I select a somatic element called header. Inside the header, I add a container. Inside the container, a row and a column. This follows the rules of bootstrap where the grid must start with a container. Rows are the only descendants of containers and columns are the only descendants of rows. Content may only be placed inside columns. In case that you want more information about Bootstrap, I will leave a link below. Inside the column, I add a flex container. A flex container is not the same as a Bootstrap container. Inside the flex container I add three flex items. A button. A heading and a second button. I then select the flex container. In the properties panel, I justify the content and align the items. If you are a stranger to Flexbox, I will leave links below for more information. When I created the container, it defaulted to a fixed container. I want this change to a fluid container. For this, I select the container and in the properties panel I change it to fluid. With the header element selected, I click on the insert after arrow. In the dialog I select the somatic element called, main. I then move the content section inside the main element. This is probably an unnecessary habit of mine, but I find that, having the content wrapped inside a main element, comes in handy when it comes to styling the page. The last item that we need for the layout page is the sidebar. In the past I have fiddled around with different types of sidebars, all requiring a lot of work. Along comes Bootstrap 5 with an off-canvas component. So, let's add the component. To do this, I right-click on app. In the dialog, I choose the off-canvas component. Here we see the off-canvas component covering part of the content. Even worse, the dark shaded area makes it impossible to work in the content page while the off-canvas is visible. In the properties panel, we see that the placement of the off-canvas is start, meaning left side. We could choose to have the component placed at the end, meaning, on the right side or at the bottom of the page. I will leave it at the start. Before we go any further, let's have a look at the style rules for the off-canvas component. We can learn a lot from the style rules especially when working with bootstrap components. If you are not familiar with cascading style sheets, I will leave a couple of links below. Notice that the style rules are located in bootstrap.min.css. For off-canvas start, we see the placement starting at top left, width, border on the right and movement to the left when hiding the component. For off-canvas we see that the component is in a fixed position. The default value for position, if not specified is, relative. The relative value places the element in the flow of the document, meaning that if I place two elements on a page, these will be placed one after the other. Using position fixed, takes the element outside of the flow of the document. This is the reason why the off-canvas component covers part of the content. Carrying on, we see that the off-canvas component is a flex container and, initially, it is hidden. This means that we need to create a button to show the off-canvas component when required. I go back to App Structure. Here I select Header and select the first button. I double-click the button to highlight and delete the button text. Then I click on the flag. In the pop-up, I choose the Align Left icon. I scroll down in the Properties panel and remove the button padding. Then I select the icon. In the properties panel I change the icon size to large.
Back to the button, this needs an on-click event to show the off canvas. In the Properties panel, scroll down to Dynamic Events. Here I add the on mouse event. For the action, I select to show the off canvas component. While in the header, I can make a couple of changes. The main heading text is changed. I also change the size of the heading by adding a class of H4. Yes, I hear you. Why did I not change the heading type to heading 4? An HTML document has an outline which is very much dependent of the heading structure. When I look at the outline of my unfinished site, I see that I have used one header 1. A couple of headings 2, headings 3 and headings 4. Why is it important to get right? The document outline creates a table of contents that could be used by assistive technology to help the user, or be parsed by search engines to improve search results. To recap, each HTML document must have one, and only one, heading one element. Lastly, I change the wording of the second button. Hard to see, but it says, log out. Let's see what I have created so far. I switch to live mode and hit the icon on the left of the page. As expected, this shows the off canvas component. When I switch to mobile view, all works well. Maybe the width of the off canvas could be reduced. When I switch to laptop view, I see that I could easily have a fixed sidebar rather than an off canvas component. So, let's have a look at the tablet view. This is a toss up. I think it best if the off canvas component stays here. To recap, for all screen sizes I want, a narrower off canvas component. For large screen sizes I want, a fixed sidebar that starts below the header. Before I make the changes in styling, I need to make adjustments to the two buttons called button 1 and button 2. I'll change the ID for the first button to show the off canvas component. I change the ID of the second button to log out. I am now ready to make the changes in styling. For this I need to open the style sheet. I open the files tab. In the site root folder called public I select the CSS folder where I find the style sheet called style.css. Double clicking the file opens it in the canvas. I will paste the style rules rather than entering them by typing them out. This to make it less boring for you. Don't worry, I will leave the code below so that you can do the same. The first line is called root. This is where we specify variables and their values. In our case I have called the first variable off canvas width with a value of 250 pixels. The second variable is called header height with a value of 40 pixels. The remaining lines set the width of the off canvas and the height of the header, both by using the respective variables. Let's check to see the result. Turn on live mode and show the off canvas component. Yes. The width has changed and the header height has been set to 40 pixels. All that remains now is to change the component for larger views. I go back to the style sheet. I again paste the code into the document. This time the styling only affects viewport widths of 992 pixels and greater. Remember how the off canvas covered part of the content area? I compensate for this by applying a left margin for the main element equal to the width of the off canvas. For the off canvas selector, I remove the motion, make it visible and move the top of the component to below the header. Further down, I remove the backdrop, remove the close button and the show button. These are not needed for a fixed sidebar. Save the style sheet if you had not already done so, and close it. Let's test our creation once again. I turn live view on and refresh the page. Now we see what I had intended. Large view with fixed sidebar, no show off canvas button, no backdrop, no close button and a main area that has a left margin the size of the width of the sidebar. In smaller screens, we see the show off canvas button, the close button and the backdrop. The next task is to add navigation to the sidebar. 
First I remove the current content from the sidebar. Inside the off canvas body I add a row and a column. Inside the column I place a navigation bar from under the blocks tab. The navigation that I choose is called, brand menu. There are a number of items included in the navigation bar that are not required for our navigation. I remove navbar brand, and navbar toggler. Then I move navbar nav to under navbar. I do not need the navbar collapse, so I delete this as well. To rearrange the alignment of the navigation items, I select navbar nav. In the properties panel, I select vertical align. For this project I need 5 navigation items. To add the extra items I duplicate the last item a couple of times. Lastly, I change the text for each of the navigation items. This is done by selecting the navigation item and changing the text in the properties panel. And that is it for the layout page. Now for the content pages. For this, I go to the pages tab. I like to keep the admin module separate from the public module. This is a matter of choice and not mandatory. I right click on pages. In the pop-up menu, I select create folder. I name the folder, admin. With admin selected, I click the plus button. In the pop-up dialog I enter the name of the page. I have called it, Index. I make sure that the page type is content page and that the correct layout page is selected. Pressing the save button cause Wappler to rumble in the background. When the rumbling is over, I am presented with a fully fledged content page. Inside the page I add a container. I change the container from a fixed container to a fluid container. Inside the container I add a row and a column. Inside the column, I add a heading with the title of the page. Wappler defaults to an H1 when adding a heading. But we already have an H1 tag in the layout page. In keeping with the rules of document outlines, I need to change this to an H2. I will now speed the video up while I create the other pages. They follow the same procedure. When done, I save all of the files. Now that I have created the content pages, the navigation items need to be linked to these pages. For that, I go back to the layout page and select one of the menu items. In the properties panel, I select the routing picker button. In the pop-up menu, I select the related link. In this case it is the index page. Then I enable the internal link option. 
This is really important if you want to load the SPA pages without reloading the page. If this link is not enabled, the link will be loaded like a regular external link, causing a complete page reload. In other words, this option is the difference between a multi-page site and a single page site. I repeat the same process for the other pages. When done, I select the index page and open it in the browser. Here we see our creation working as intended. There is just one thing that I would like to change. When I remove the file name from the browser's address bar, I get this error message. I want to be able to see the contents of the index page when I do that. To fix that, I go to the routing panel where I remove the index file name. Then I select the layout page and in the app connect panel, I do a refresh and remove index from the link. Save the page and open the index page in the browser. The problem here is that the index page is still loaded into the browser while there is no routing for the page. In a real life situation, this will not happen. If I open the admin module just by entering the admin folder name, all is well. The index page is loaded. We should make one last adjustment. At the moment, the browser shows an untitled page. To be pedantic, I should rectify this. I go to the layout page and in the properties panel I change the title. One last browser test shows the result. And that is all. We now have a single page admin module. A lot of the work is performed under the hood. That is what makes Wappler so great. Using any other IDE, we would still be slaving away writing code to do the same task. In the next video, I will show user registration. I hope to see you there. Thank you for watching.